Hey guys, Ron here from Tactical Fitness, and today I'm gonna to talk about my sniper kit setup. A little bit about me, I've been serving in the IDF Reserve for about 11, 12 years now, since I got released from active duty. I served there as a sniper in a reconnaissance battalion. Um, I was just in Israel, obviously doing my reserve duty with the current situation, uh, being in and out of Gaza and around the Strip, visiting all the places that were unfortunately hit by the terrorists. But anyhow, today we're gonna go over my kit. So we'll start here with my base layers. First of all, my uniform. So unfortunately the IDF does not issue the best uniforms, at least to the reserve units. And I wanted to make sure that my guys were taken care of. So we were able to raise donations and get some awesome uniforms for Massive. They're fire resistant. Um, so we'll start here with the pants. This is their Hellman combat pant with the cry knee pad uh, insert. This is a, a great, great, great uh, pant for us to use, particularly because of the knee pad insert. It just makes it easier for you as a soldier, not constantly having to pull knee pads up off your ankles and having it shift around. They're just always staying on your knees. Also fire resistance is really important when you're dealing with IEDs, RPGs, mortars, all kinds of stuff that can burn you, burn you and maim you. So this was the, this pant setup came in super clutch. The belt, it is a G-code inner belt, and we'll talk about the belt here in a little bit. The shirt, also a massive shirt, fire resistant. The main thing I liked about the shirt is because it's fire resistant, you end up sweating a little bit more, but it also dries super, super quick, which is really important as a soldier. You're always sweating, you're in kit, you're walking, you're running, you're lifting. Having something that dries super quick is very, very important. Moving on, let's talk about the plate carrier setup. So this is my plate carrier setup. This is a Ferro Concept uh, plate carrier with a Haley Strategic micro chest rig and a Haley Strategic uh, med kit dangler pouch, okay? And the reason why I like this plate kit, uh, this plate carrier and kit, because it's super modular, so everything can be taken off, put on, and so on and so forth, which came super handy to me um, as a sniper. So the main reason why I went with this chest rig is because of that pouch here in the front and the Kydex inserts. Um, so I had my sniper magazine pouch, or sniper magazine in that pouch, and then I had my Stanag magazines for my Tavor uh, up, up in the front here, the three mags, an additional one in my belt, an additional one in the gun. Um, on my chest rig, I had extra batteries. This was for optics, for night vision, for thermal, for my ear pro, for anything that I needed extra batteries for, primarily AAA and CR123 batteries, as well as AA. Another important thing that I had on my kit uh, is an IR um, chem light. This IR chem light, we kind of cover it up so it doesn't shine and stick out as much, so we covered it in, in tape. And then, of course, I had a regular chem light as well. We use this a lot of times uh, to mark things. Uh, so if there is uh, some type of danger, uh, we use it to mark things. A lot of times we can also kind of tape them off to the side and use it as a very, very low light type deal so we're not showing our positions. Well, a lot of times you can use it almost like as a, as a flashlight, as a temporary flashlight, uh, especially inside buildings. If we want to mark hazards, things like that, it comes in super useful. And then, of course, Israeli patch, got to represent. Next, the main reason, again, why I like this, this type of setup, because I can clip it off really quick. This is super important as a sniper. You're finding yourself a lot of times in a long, 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 long ambush or overwatch type situation where you're standing or sitting or in some type of weird position and you want to be as comfortable as possible because being comfortable is also professional. So you can be in that position for a long time and also so you can uh, make a good shot. So comfort is really, really important. And the cool thing with this, it just clips off. So now I'm taking off both the weight and the bulk of the placard. And now I can be in position still with my armor on me. And of course I carried uh, level four plates on here, level four sappy plates. The med kit as well, the reason why uh, I really like this med kit and the reason why I chose it, uh, one, because I can carry pretty much everything I need in here uh, in terms of medical. So, uh, of course, a tourniquet, quick clot, Israeli bandage, 
all those fun things. But the other thing that's nice about it, it's Velcro. So if I need to toss this med bag to someone, I can toss it to them and then they'll have access to all this med gear wherever they are. Let's move on. Let's talk about the belt. So I started off with a lot of extra things on my belt that I didn't really need. So I ended up doing a much more minimalist setup, okay? So this is a G-code belt. G-code, uh, I believe it's the contractor belt. Uh, first thing we'll talk about is my knife. Uh, this is a tool uh, for all intents and purposes. And that's what I ended up using it for a lot. Uh, building hides, cutting things, um, getting rid of hazards and so on and so forth. Super useful, this is the Montana Knife Company. Uh, knife that was just super clutch all the time. Uh, for all kinds of building and uh, utilitarian purposes. Uh, G-code mag pouch, again, I really like the Scorpions. Uh, you can fit anything in there, um, but just standard Stanag type magazine that went in here. Of course, a Leatherman. Leatherman are super, super useful. This is the MUT, the Mutt Leatherman from uh, Leatherman. And again, if you are any type of soldier, policeman, uh, everyday carry civilian, have a Leatherman with you. It's a super useful tool for pretty much anything. And again, I use this a lot for building, cutting, sawing, especially the saw is super useful for sawing, for having to build um, almost scaffolding type things as a sniper. Next on my belt, um, I have the pig gloves, pig tactical gloves. Again, you're dealing with a lot of shrapnel, a lot of, um, jagged rocks, jagged concrete, rebar, and things like that that you're having to climb over and move around. So gloves are super important to keep your hands safe. Also, you're dealing with just a lot of nasty stuff. So the gloves, the gloves keep you out of that trouble. And then tape. People always ask me, why do you have tape? Why do you have electrical tape on you? Again, uh, one of these utilitarian things that I found that just to be super useful all of the time in terms of, again, fixing things, taping things down, uh, taping stick lights, and so on and so forth. Something else that I had on my belt that's missing from here is a double grenade pouch. So I had a couple of frag grenades that um, I carried with me at all times that were on my belt, so they're super handy to take and toss. Another important thing, if you're doing any type of shooting, whether it's at the range or in war, or in warfare, iPro, um, you're dealing with explosions, iPro saves eyes, saves vision. Um, I know for a fact it has saved a lot of soldiers' visions uh, in Gaza uh, just wearing their iPro. So uh, have that ballistically rated iPro is, is, is a non-negotiable as a soldier. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about the bag, okay? So I carried with me a Haley Strategic flat pack Okay, um, I really like this pack. Of course, I had a much bigger pack where I would carry all my gear, but most of the time I ended up just using this flat pack because as we go to little uh, overwatch positions or patrols, stuff like that, this was super useful to me. Water, food, thermals, uh, cold weather gear, etc. It all pretty much fit in here. And then again, as a sniper, I ended up using this a lot of times as a rest for my rifle. So just simply putting it in front of my rifle and resting my rifle. Not a fan of bipods. Bipods are great for setting your rifle down on the ground. Not so great for shooting because it bounces. We wanna go hard, soft, hard, not hard, hard, hard. So the gun bounces a lot. So let's see what's in my bag, okay? First of all, hydration. Um, had a source a bladder that I had with me all the time. A uh, huge fan of this, super easy to carry around. Holds three liters of water, keeps me hydrated especially as a soldier walking around, you start walking, you're, you're just drenched in sweat. So hydration is important. A lot of time I put electrolytes in there as well, just keep me a little bit better hydrated. Headlamp uh, with a red option, uh, set it on red as well. Um, again, anytime I'm doing any type of admin tasks in an admin area, came in super useful. Okay, binos. Again, as a sniper, you're doing a lot of overwatch, a lot of intel work, you wanna be able to see what the enemy is doing. Of course, as a sniper, you gotta have your cheat code, which is the Kestrel 5700. It's basically cheating. 
I mean, let's be honest here. It's basically cheating. If you, if you put in the right data in here, you're, you're not going to miss. And another use that I use with my pack that not just for resting the rifle, but a lot of time in position, especially when I have my cold weather gear in there and everything, it just became a great cuddle bag. And it's not cuddling just to, to feel nice. It's cuddling so I can get in a comfortable shooting position, especially if I'm seated or kneeling or something like that. I can use that as a rest for my body. So I'm not having to use any, any muscle whatsoever to support the rifle. The other thing that I always had with me in my bag is my hat. Um, this is something that as a soldier, you gotta have, you're always outdoors, you're always dealing with the sun. Um, so it just keeps your life a lot more comfortable. If you're in a position for a long time, it's a lot more comfortable to wear a hat just to keep that sun out of your eyes. Let's talk about the helmet, okay? So um, I ran this hard-headed veteran's helmet with me. Um, I found it to be really good, obviously much better than the, the standard issue, old, old helmets from, I don't know, the 80s that, that the IDF was trying to give us. Um, ran out obviously with the cover. Uh, a lot of times I would have stick lights, things like that, um, accessories that I needed here um, rapidly. And I read it, ran it with my Peltor Comtax uh, as well. Um, a lot of times once I got into position though, I would kind of flip them up um, because it's just very hot. This is very hot to wear them. And then if, if I need to shoot, just flip them back on, super easy to do um, as well. But this helmet uh, was super comfortable. Well, as comfortable as wearing a helmet is um, compared to other helmets out there. And everyone was super jealous and constantly trying to steal my helmet from me. So it was a good choice. Of course, um, battle rifle. We'll talk about that real quick. Uh, so along with my sniper rifle, I carried a X95 Tavor. Uh, if you're in the US, it's similar to the SBR version of Tavor, the 13 and a half inch barrel, uh, but with the tube handguard, and I've done videos in the past about it as well. It's essentially the Gen 1 X95 that the IDF rolled out. Um, the rifle itself is fine. We didn't really have any issues with malfunctions or anything, but it comes with that heavy, heavy, heavy 10 pound trigger, which is not so fun. But I actually found it to be fairly comfortable for the work out there just because it's so compact. Um, anytime you're dealing with urban warfare, you're always in nukes and crannies and, and whatnot. So I found it actually fairly comfortable for the environment. And really, that's what it was designed for, for a close quarter battle, for urban warfare and so on and so forth. Um, this is my, my American setup. Uh, so I run it with a Vortex UH-1 and a Surefire M600 Lite, as well as a Hux suppressor. The last thing we're going to talk about is my tripod. Um, if you're a professional sniper or a long range shooter, you should own a tripod. I brought with me a Shadow Tech with a hog saddle um, tripod. This came in super clutch, especially with initially we were issued M24s, old M24s that don't have any ARCA or type of good mounting system for tripods. So that hog saddle setup came in super, super handy. Um, and then later on, we switched out to really, really light, uh, really versatile archetype uh, tripods from a company I cannot pronounce the name of because it's from Norway, um, but it has a great uh, setup. It's, it's a very sturdy Arca uh, ball that doesn't get loose on you, especially with a heavy HCR 2000 rifle. And um, it's carbon fiber, so it's super light, packable, and easy to carry around. But guys, that's my setup. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and hope to see you guys at one of our courses. Thank you for watching.